Have you ever been told in your life that you are very, very full of common sense, but you have the intelligence or the academic knowledge of a nitwit? Well, today we explore that concept. I'm Brian Von Vier, and how would you play a high intelligence, low wisdom character? I can actually answer this one from personal experience. It resulted in a TPK or a total party kill, but everyone was laughing so hard that no one actually minded very much. So my character, Ford, has an intelligence score of 17, very darn impressive in D&D 2nd edition, and a wisdom of 6. It was hard to roll good character stats back then, just saying. She was a wizardly type who specialized in evocation, flashy, damaging types of magic, and had a slight streak of pyromania. So, she was thrilled when she hit level 5 and learned Fireball. Oh, Fireball. Her and her party are chasing some fleeing bad guys through a sewer, and she's running out of spells. No magic missiles or Melf's acid arrows left. Just that one precious third level spell she's recently acquired. So, she casts Fireball in an enclosed sewer, full of methane. Karoosh! Boom! Not a single member of the party managed to save, which would have reduced damage, and those of us not killed outright were left unconscious and rapidly losing HP, with no one around to do first aid. There were other consequences as well, as it turned out, but the TPK was of course the most important one in that moment. Intelligence is equivalent to book smarts. Wisdom is equivalent to street smarts. Or perhaps more pertinently, intelligence is knowing how to do, whereas wisdom is knowing when to do and when not to do. A smart but not wise character may be impulsive, or a bit of a show-off, or they just may not grasp the potential consequences of their actions. Potentially, they're so smart, and know it, and have been told it for so long, and are so used to thinking their way out of rough spots, that they get overconfident and don't realize the consequences are for them too. They won't necessarily get anyone killed by blowing up a tunnel system full of highly flammable gas while they're all inside, but they could as easily bollocks up negotiations as a character with poor charisma, who hopefully at least knows to keep their mouth shut in delicate situations, by saying just the wrong thing at the worst possible time. They may realize intellectually that a town has a high crime rate, but not quite cotton on to the fact that this means they should avoid following strangers into dark alleys in said town. They may math out the statistical probability of a bad draw from a deck of many things, then have a what the hell moment, and draw one last card anyway. Maybe they were raised in a monastery, safe, sheltered, guarded, and educated academically, to the gills. A character like that could know six languages and not realize they're being hit on and or conned in any of them because it's simply so far outside of their life experiences. Perhaps they come from a culture where people react to things in a completely different way. If you've been raised by a troop of apes in the jungle, then barring your teeth is not a friendly gesture, even if you are human. If you were raised on a hippie commune, capitalism may well elude you. They may not understand simple social cues, norms, or expectations. It's not that they're dumb, it's just that they're fish out of the water. There are a lot of ways to play a character with high intelligence and low wisdom, and many of them are a lot of fun. Generally, like an academic. You might, for example, have him with no sense of appropriate urgency looks into a room and thinks about possible traps while the rest of the party is being taken from behind. Or walking along with the party completely absorbed in a spellbook and doesn't notice the monster in the way. He might have no sense of diplomacy, offending men in power, or completely ignoring flirting women. This may be amusing if the character has high charisma. He might be the worst sort of know-it-all, one who actually does. He would be very fixed in his ideas about how to go about things the sort of wizard who will collect that spell ingredient despite the party needing gold. Arr. The sort of thief who would pick the pocket of the local sorcerer. A fighter who had in one game had stats like that, we turned up in a town. A creature appears from a building and eats a local. Before the rest of us could move, 
he rushed in and killed it with two precise strokes in its weak points. And he was ready to take the applause from the crowd and was shocked when they started throwing rocks and screaming about killing their god. If you're playing 5th edition, take a look at the skills section of the character sheet. For intelligence, we have arcana, history, nature, and religion. These are all knowing facts. Skills, a character with a high intelligence score, is a repository of facts, a walking encyclopedia. The odd man out of intelligence skills is investigation. This skill is about induction from evidence. You're trying to figure out more about a thing by studying it. It's making practical use of that head full of knowledge. Now, let's look at the wisdom skills. We've got animal handling, insight, medicine, perception, and survival. Animal handling, medicine, and survival are hands-on skills that rely on intuition and empathy more than manual dexterity and knowledge. While they can be reinforced with book learning, they can be acquired only through hands-on doing. It's easy to explain why someone would be bad at those, they've never actually done them before. Insight and perception combine intuition and situational awareness. Being bad at these means your character is lacking in empathy or just oblivious to their surroundings. So, as others have mentioned, the classic high into low whiz character is the absent-minded professor. This character lives inside their own head. They're too intrigued by the idea that ancient sun elves worship Tiamat to pay attention to the ruined temple they're walking through. Whenever this character fumbles a wisdom check, it's probably because a cool new idea popped into their head and distracted them from reality. There is a fun variation on this theme you can do with wizards. Wizards exist in a strange realm where reality intersects with possibility. They're constantly doing things like filling empty air with webs or fire or transforming beholders into chipmunks. So for a wizard deeply steeped in the theory and philosophy of magic, reality isn't certain. The physical world is not an unassailable fact, but merely a suggestion. A wizard of this sort with a low wisdom score might be aware of their surroundings, they just refuse to accept it as it is. They might constantly question their perception of reality, requiring multiple tests to ascertain the truth, or they simply insist things are, or really, really ought to be, otherwise. Someone who walks into a room and whose focus is first drawn to the rare copy of Eingorn's late spring flowering plants of the western region and their alchemical uses, which he has been looking for a copy of for months and who later only acknowledges the pit trap and the platoon of beast folk in the room, and only as ancillary obstacles between him and an exciting evening of reading. High intelligence means that the character knows a lot of facts, trivia, and knowledge, and pieces of information. Intelligence in D&D is all about the virtue of accuracy, which asks the question, is this correct? Low wisdom means that the character is not good at understanding how their words and actions will be interpreted or predicting the probable outcome of a specific course of action. Wisdom is about the virtue of appropriateness, which asks the question, will this lead to a positive outcome? To use some examples from our world, you are the defendant in a serious criminal case, which is being tried by a judge, bench trial. The judge makes a statement that includes a phrase in Latin that he mispronounces. Your high intelligence tells you what the correct pronunciation is. Your low wisdom means you fail to understand that standing up and interrupting the judge is a bad idea. You correct the judge's Latin, demonstrating a commitment to accuracy and a lack of understanding of appropriateness. You are a fresh recruit on the first day of the Marine Corps' boot camp. Your drill sergeant is leading your group on a run while singing the Marine Corps' hymn, but he messes up one of the words, singing the shores of Montezuma. Your high intelligence means that you know the correct words, the halls of Montezuma. Your low wisdom score means you don't know that correcting your drill sergeant may result in a much longer, less pleasant run. In both cases, accuracy is prioritized while appropriateness is overlooked. To roleplay a low wisdom, high intelligence character in D&D, keep that formula in mind. Find ways to do things that are correct on every factual point, but are ill-advised. Think college professor, someone who is very book smart on their topic of expertise, but would walk down a dark alleyway in Chicago at 3am without a second thought that it might be dangerous. 
The professor knows every fact about molecular biology and why proteins affect our bodies the way they do and the functions of mitochondria and how they supply energy to the cells. But that same intelligent person can't change the oil in their car, cook a meal, understand why a woman is crying. No way, nobody can figure that out. Hey, I can. Empathy, my guy. That was a little unfair. This same smart person cannot hunt, fish, nor forage for food, nor grow crops. You know, basic survival. The wizard, with an 18 intelligence score, or 20 if you're playing D20 style, but a 7 wisdom can deduce that the castle was built during the last age, is constructed of granite, and is in a state of terrible disrepair. What he doesn't figure out, but the ranger with the 18 wisdom score and 10 intelligence does, is that the main door has a chunk of wood missing. There are a bunch of divots in said door from where a multitude of arrows have been removed. The banners are conspicuously missing on the battlement, there is a foul odor in the air, and 50 yards left of the drawbridge, there's a huge stack of humanoid or larger bones. Something nasty awaits inside, but that's just my take on that. I'd play it like a socially awkward or ignorant wizard who knows a bunch of useless World War II facts but can't navigate social situations for squat. Watch Big Bang Theory. Sheldon has an int of 18, but a charisma and wisdom score of like, you know, six. Almost like a Vulcan or a purely logical robot. A fun idea is having a character who only responds or starts listening when they hear a certain phrase or interesting topic. Couldn't talk to them about battle plans, but if you bring up the battle under the bridge that happened like, I don't know, 80 years ago in a distant third world nation, they just frickin' lose it. Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here, back at it again checking in after the vid. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell to get notified when we post or when we go live. If you want to catch us live live though, check us out on Twitch, which will be linked in the description below, along with our brand new TikTok, which will have a little interesting one minute shorts at the very longest. You guys and gals might like that. And if you want to come check out me, your boy Brian Von Vier, come do so over on YouTube or Twitch. And if you want to submit a story, of course, please do so on our subreddit, r slash Mr. Ripper. That said, I try to end things on a positive, and today's no different. No matter how old you are, or where you come from, or anything, you can always learn more. You can always learn to develop empathy, which is the act of being in someone's shoes, rather than being sad over a situation that somebody else is in. And you can always learn to be a little bit smarter, too. You can always read more books or study more. It depends on what you are good at and how you are able to learn. Everybody has their own unique way of learning. Some are visual, some are audible. It all depends on who you are. You just have to have the initiative to go out there and do it and to have someone like me tell you flat out, anything you want to do, you can go do. Trust me, it is possible. All the love, everybody. We'll see you next time. Please stay safe, stay hydrated, and we will see you again. Bye for now.